If you've been following along with the news, or at least the memes, then you know something is going on with GameStop stock. It's headed to the moon, so to speak, or in other words, it's been up over a thousand percent and there's room to run, at least in many people's minds. Why is that? Why is GameStop, a retailer that seems almost inevitably headed for bankruptcy, going up so much in price? Today alone, it's up over 75%. As of the time of this video, we've seen 100% swings every single day for the last week. Why is that? Why are so many people buying GameStop? What does it mean for you? Should you buy GameStop? And what's going on with the hedge funds versus Wall Street bets dilemma? How does a stock move like this? We're going to be discussing all of that here in this video. There's a lot of interesting things going on. Certain uh, brokerages like Robinhood and others are actually restricting people from purchasing GameStop stock, either entirely or in part. There's a lot of shady stuff going on. I'm gonna explain payment for order flow, how Robinhood actually makes money because they don't charge commissions and why that has created a mixed set of incentives for retail investors who are using that platform who are trying to bet against the very hedge funds that Robinhood is making money off of. We're we'll gonna be discussing all of that in this video. With that being said, my name is Kevin Conway. I make personal finance videos like this all the time. Please give a like to this video to help spread the word and help the channel out. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. With that being said, let's get into it. The entire GameStop stock dilemma is emblematic of a much larger populist movement in the country. Here we have the case of retail investors, many of whom frequent Wall Street bets, a forum on Reddit and other blogs online, pit against the so-called hedge funds who are placing bets against GameStop stock. So what exactly is going on here? Well, it all comes down to something called short selling. Short selling is the mechanism by which you are betting against the stock. So what do I mean by all this? Well, GameStop is a publicly traded company, which means that you could purchase shares of stock. In other words, you can become an owner of GameStop by purchasing these shares on any platform such as Charles Schwab or Robinhood or whatever. You purchase the shares of the stock. Well, that's not the only way you can make money off the stock. If you think that the stock is going to go up, you want to purchase the shares. But what happens if you think the stock is going to go down? Many people thought GameStop stock was going to go down over the years, and it really has. And they thought it was inevitably headed for bankruptcy because it is a retailer that's brick and mortar, and it's being outcompeted by things online. Their financials look absolutely terrible. So how do you bet against it? Well, you short the stock. What I mean by that is holders of the stock can loan you the shares. You could borrow the shares from somebody else and then immediately sell them on the open market wait for a period of time to occur, and then buy the shares back to give back to the person that you borrowed the shares from. How would you make money? Well, imagine that you borrowed the shares and they had a current value of $20. Well, time passes, you pay a small amount of interest to the person that you borrowed the shares from, and those shares went down from $20 to $10. Well, once you had a $10 share in the open market, you would purchase it back, and then you'd give it back to the person you borrowed it from. They would be left holding the bag, they would be out the money, but because you sold the shares of stock when you borrowed it initially at $20, and then later on you bought it back at $10, you were able to keep the profit of $10. Now notice that you only make money if the stock goes down, and also notice that no matter what happens, because you don't actually own the stock because you borrowed it from somebody else, you must purchase the stock at some future date if you are a short seller, because you're borrowing the stock and you sold it, you still owe them the stock at the end of the day, which means you are inevitably a purchaser of the stock. All of this is okay so long as the stock goes down in price for the short seller. If the stock keeps going down in price, they purchase it for cheaper than what they bought it for. But if the opposite occurs, say you borrowed that stock, it was $20, you sold it, you waited a period of time, and now it's $200. Well, now you have to go out to the open market purchase the stock for $200, turn around, give it back to the person that you borrowed it from that is then holding the stock, and you will have been out $200 minus $20, $180 for that time period, plus the interest of which you owe the person for borrowing the shares short. As you can imagine, short selling is not exactly for the average investor, the retail investor, people like you and me who are sitting at home who want to do well in the economy, and so they purchase stocks and they hope that they go up, and they get dividends and it's a great way to make money over time. Short selling requires a lot of capital because as you can imagine, stocks don't always go down when people short them, which means that you have to cover your short. You have to come out and actually come out of pocket 
money to make up the difference between what you borrow the shares for and what they currently are trading for. That means that this form of investing is left almost exclusively for hedge funds and other very large money managers. Hedge funds are essentially just groups of people who pull together very wealthy people's money in order to execute some complex trading strategies such as short selling and other things such as put and call buying on derivatives and many other things like that. Hedge funds, so to speak, are the ones that are shorting GameStop stock. There's an enormous short interest in GameStop stock. It seemed almost inevitable, like we talked about, that GameStop would inevitably go bankrupt. And so, as you can imagine, many people thought this is free money, it's very easy to do. I'm a hedge fund, I'm gonna short this stock. There's really not that much risk because it looks almost as if it's gonna go to zero no matter what happens. It may go up and down, but I've got enough money to ride out the storm. I'm gonna bet against this stock. Well, everybody thought that. Everybody in Wall Street thought that, which is why the short interest in GameStop was so high, meaning the amount of people betting against GameStop was at one time more than the entire amount of shares outstanding with GameStop. Now, how could that even be possible? At one time, there's a 138% short interest in the stock, meaning that more than 1.3 people were betting against GameStop for every share of stock there was out there. It's very strange how this happened, but if you remember the scene from The Big Short, where Selena Gomez and Richard Thaler are sitting at the poker table and they're making a bet on the uh, cards and you know Selena Gomez says, I'll bet you X dollars that I'm gonna you know get 21 here. And Richard Thaler says, okay. And the people behind them say, I am actually uh, betting on Selena Gomez. I like her, so I'm gonna make you a bet that she actually wins that bet, and so on and so forth for the people behind them and behind them. People make subsequent bets on and on and on and on, and the amount of total losses potential on the outcome of just one thing explodes. It's exponential uh, you know, in, in, in outcome. That is exactly what happened here with short selling, because if I borrowed a, a, a stock short from, uh, from somebody who owned GameStop, and then I turned around and I actually lent it out to somebody else for the interim time period because they wanted to short it, and then they turned around and they lent it out to somebody else because they wanted to short it, well, I would be making some money along the way because they pay me interest on the amount of shares that are outstanding and so on and so forth. And as long as the stock went down, well, I'd be able to cover, I'd be fine, they'd be able to cover, they'd be fine. But in the event the stock flipped and actually went up at all, everybody, remember, had to be a purchaser of the short selling stock at some point because they don't actually own it. They have to purchase it at a future date. So any future movement of price upwards would create pressure on them to cover their short and then they would have to cover their short. They would purchase the stock. The stock would have more buyers, which would drive the price up higher, and then it would create more people who would have to purchase the stock and drive the shares up higher. And because so many people were betting against GameStop, this led to an exponential growth in the price of GameStop when it moved even a degree. And here's where Wall Street bets and the so-called retail traders, the dumb money in the eyes of Wall Street, came in. They noticed that there was 138% short interest in the stock an unsustainable amount of short interest, and frankly, an extreme amount of risk taken on by these hedge funds. They noticed this, which is why they began buying these shares they posted on Wall Street Bets forums online saying, purchase, purchase, purchase game stock. It doesn't actually matter what the company does. This stock itself is shorted so much that if we create any buying pressure at all, it'll inevitably lead to a so-called short squeeze, which is what we described, which is when people have to cover their shares because the prices went up. That's exactly what happened and it started off slowly and then it grew exponential because like we talked about, so many people were betting against this in the hedge fund world that just a small amount of movement in price created an enormous amount of buying pressure. Add on top of this the fact that there's something called a margin call. A margin call is when you are borrowing money from your broker to purchase something and if that something goes down in price or goes down in value, then you may be asked to put up more collateral or they will automatically sell those shares that you purchased using their borrowed money without your consent at all. That's a margin call, and that's what happened with a lot of these hedge funds because they had some movement in price of these shares. They borrowed money to borrow the shares of GameStop from someone else who borrowed the shares of GameStop, which means that a small movement in price for them created a margin call, which meant that their broker uh, had to buy the, the GameStop stock on the open market to cover their short, 
which created more buying pressure on the stock and more people had to go about that which is why GameStop stock went up so dramatically. Specifically, what happened is there's a hedge fund called Melvin Capital. Melvin Capital was betting against GameStop and they had garnered a very bad reputation in the industry because hedge funds like Melvin Capital are known for basically brutally trying to make as much money as possible, betting against companies, doing leveraged buyouts, selling their assets, doing whatever they can to extract money for the people that are investors with them. And that's why they had such a negative light. Whether or not that's healthy for the economy is a separate issue, but many people don't like hedge funds. They don't like Melvin Capital. They view them as emblematic of something greater in this country, which is an extreme concentration of wealth with a few people who have too much power. And they want to take uh, something against Melvin Capital and other hedge funds, which is basically what happened. The enormous army of people online with free brokerage trading accounts who were able to purchase just a little bit of GameStop created this buying pressure, which led to the short squeeze and Melvin Capital lost $2.75 billion estimated or even more, it's unclear exactly how much, in this very short period of time because GameStop went up in price. But here's the problem. During that time period, brokerage firms like Robinhood and others began to restrict the ability for retail investors, so-called dumb money, people like you and me, from purchasing GameStop stock. Now, why did they do that? It's because of something called payment for order flow. Robinhood and other free brokerage trading apps almost exclusively make the bulk of their money through something called payment for order flow. What does that mean? Well, every time you execute a trade through Robinhood or elsewhere, they take that trade order that you've made and they turn around and they whisper to one of their buddies like Citadel Capital or others that an incoming trade from a so-called dumb money investor is coming. And when they do so, Citadel goes and purchases that stock before you're allowed to execute your trade and then they sell it to you for a very fractionally higher price. That's payment for order flow. Firms like Citadel, high frequency trading firms will actually pay firms like Robinhood and others for the order flow. That's why it's called payment for order flow. It flows through those firms. They make a tiny spread on hundreds and hundreds of millions of uh, executed trade orders a day, which is how they make money. They basically just skim off the top every single time. And so Robinhood has an enormous incentive to prevent retail investors from hurting firms like Citadel and others, and like Melvin Capital as well. That is why Robinhood restricted the trading access of GameStop from retail investors from being able to purchase them because they were hurting their friends. Now this seems obviously like anti-competitive behavior. This seems obviously like something against what we all believe in, which is free market capitalism, but that's what has occurred. Now Robinhood would say they're preventing market manipulation, but they're not really because they're exactly doing that for firms like Citadel by routing orders to them. That's what created so much backlash I totally agree with everybody out there who's incredibly frustrated with these firms and I think that they deserve nothing but the, you know, just to face their own consequences with their actions and the risks that they've taken on. You have politicians from Ted Cruz to AOC agreeing all on one side that this is ridiculous and this shouldn't be taken lightly and there should be hearings in Congress or at least consequences for this so-called collusion or market manipulation by firms like Robinhood and others. And I tend to agree. There's something wrong about the idea that when you purchase stock, somebody else can be making money off of you. And then if you're making too much money as a retail investor and it's hurting the, the big guys, the hedge funds out there, well, then they could shut you down. That strikes me as very odd. I, I don't exactly like that. And I feel like most people agree. So let me know in the comments below. But where do we go from here? Should you purchase GameStop stock? What happens? Well, it's my opinion that you should do whatever you want with your money. And if you have a small amount of money, it's a small amount of your net worth, go ahead and purchase the stock. Me personally, I'm not doing so. And the reason why I'm not doing so isn't because I don't have sympathy for this idea that there's a little guy, a retail investor, who's getting taken advantage of by the so-called big guys, but it has more to do with the fact that at the end of the day, a stock is just a piece of ownership in a company. You're just an owner of the company. And I don't think GameStop in the long term is gonna do very well. And I think it's almost inevitable that it does declare bankruptcy, that it does go to zero. Now, whether that's in a week or a month or a year or a couple years, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm a buy and hold long-term boring investor. I like index funds. I like to put my money to sleep and let it ride for the long term. And I'm not willing to put that with GameStop, but I'm willing to sit by watch all the memes and watch the amazing things that are happening right now. I'll be following along. But that's pretty much what's going on with GameStop and the stock right now. 
There's a lot of craziness, so let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Give a like to this video and subscribe to the channel if it helped you out. I'll see you next time.